there can be no mistaking the weakness that continues to build in the uh, industrial piece of the economy. And, and this is very evident in looking at traditional um, uh, indicators of Chinese industry, whether they're industrial output, uh, electrical power generation, uh, and uh, manufacturing uh, activity is measured by purchasing managers, indexes, uh, and the like. They're all very weak and they're now uh, growing at levels that we really haven't seen since the financial crisis of 08 and 09. The offset though, and it's a very important one, is coming from a sector of the economy that's really being emphasized much more so by the government in its rebalancing uh, uh, agenda, and that's the services-led uh, underpinnings of the consumer economy. Services continue to grow much more rapidly than the rest of the Chinese economy. Through the first three quarters this year, uh, about 8.5% uh, year on year versus 6% for uh, manu uh, uh, manufacturing uh, and construction. And uh, this is a much more labor intensive sector of the economy, it generates about 30% more jobs per unit of output than does manufacturing and construction. So the services economy, which is now um, for the first time ever the largest economy in China, and growing considerably faster than the remainder of the economy is really underpinning uh, the, the, the broad structural uh, characteristics uh, of the Chinese economy. And this is very encouraging uh, to me, but it's something that's very uh, much ignored by observers in the West who are so used to looking at China through the lens of the, uh, the old manufacturing uh, uh, in, in industrial uh, economy. It really undermines the possibility that um, the equity market is, is mature enough, uh, is uh, 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 predictable enough, uh, is sound enough to take the place of um, a significant portion uh, of the credit that's intermediated through the banking sector. And the bond market has been growing, uh, but it's still um, uh, relatively uh, small. So I think. The financial market uh, reforms are uh, very disappointing, and um, uh, the, the, the equity market um, uh, disruptions are, are, are worrisome in that regard, and they still are, uh, given what's happened to equity market trading in the first um, uh, uh, tr uh, few trading days of 2016. The government has made good progress in um, uh, uh, boosting the income, uh, personal income share of the, um, uh, the Chinese economy uh, based on uh, uh, more job growth and services, higher real wages through urbanization, but it's let, made less progress uh, in reducing fear-driven precautionary saving. In other words, you can get income up, but it, it's been very difficult uh, for the strategists to convince Chinese people to spend the income. They're still fearful of an uncertain future given uh, what I think is a relatively porous social safety net, retirement and health care uh, in particular. Most observers in the West um, are very much fixated on the China that they have come to know and do not appreciate uh, what I call the next China, which is going to be a very different uh, China. Uh, and, you know, a classic case in point are investors in financial uh, markets. Um, they, a lot of them, um, made major investments uh, in all sorts of commodities from metals to, um, uh, to, to oil uh, and premised on the notion that China's voracious appetite for commodities was uh, going to continue unabated. And the resource uh, economies from Australia, Brazil, Russia, Canada, New Zealand made the same bets. They're getting hit the hardest because China by changing its model not only is slowing GDP growth but is moving away from commodity-intensive, industrial-led GDP growth going into more commodity-light 
uh, economic growth. So the world's largest source of demand for commodities uh, is number one, slowing its growth rate, and number two, moving away from commodity intensive growth. And so the observers in the West, um, unprepared for this, in denial, uh, are getting hit uh, extremely hard. I've heard it said many times uh, recently that, um, you know, uh, we don't export much to China, so we shouldn't really be all that worried if China slows. Again, that, that view is a really superficial view. China accounts for 7% of our exports, so it is well below the export share that goes to um, Canada and Mexico, our two largest trading partners. But guess what? China's our third largest trading partner behind our two contiguous NAFTA partners, and it's by far the most rapidly growing. Over the last 10 years, average annual growth of exports to China, has, uh, U.S. exports to China, has been 14% a year. And that's double the combined uh, growth rate of exports to Mexico and Canada. So our domestic economy is actually still pretty weak, especially the American consumer. We need strong export growth to offset that, to keep our uh, recovery intact. Uh, and our um, uh, third largest and most rapidly growing export market is not going to be delivering in the future the way we're accustomed to. So we just can't smugly say, oh, you know, we're America. You know, we don't feel anything that's going on in China. We, we better think long and hard about that.